The race for hypersonic missile dominance is one of the most intense arms competitions in modern warfare. While Russia and China have surged ahead, the United States has struggled to keep pace. Despite its vast military budget and advanced technology, the Pentagon has faced significant setbacks in hypersonic missile development. But why has the U.S. failed to match Russia in this field? Let's break it down into key factors. One of the biggest roadblocks for the U.S. has been cost. According to reports, a price for an affordable hypersonic missile like Mako comes with a staggering price tag of no less than $20 million. Compare that to Russia, which has managed to develop and deploy hypersonic weapons at a fraction of the cost. This massive price gap isn't just about materials or technology, it's about inefficiency. The U.S. military industrial complex relies on multiple contractors, leading to bureaucratic delays, fragmented efforts, and budget overruns. Unlike Russia, which streamlined its hypersonic projects through centralized control, the Pentagon has juggled competing defense contractors, each pushing their own interests. The result? A slow-moving, expensive process with little to show for it. Hypersonic missiles travel at speeds of Mach 5 or higher, meaning they generate extreme heat as they move through the atmosphere. One of the critical technologies needed to make these weapons effective is thermal protection systems, materials that can withstand blistering temperatures. Russia and China have cracked this problem. The US, on the other hand, still struggles with it. American engineers have been working on high temperature resistant materials, but they haven't yet reached the level needed for mass production. Another issue? Testing infrastructure. Hypersonic weapons require advanced wind tunnels to simulate real-world conditions. While Russia and China have invested heavily in such facilities, the U.S. has lagged behind. Without proper testing environments, American prototypes often fail or underperform. This has led to repeated delays in the Pentagon's hypersonic programs. Beyond technical hurdles, the U.S. has also struggled with its overall strategy. While Russia and China have remained focused, developing their hypersonic programs with clear objectives, the U.S. has taken a fragmented and inconsistent approach. Instead of committing to a single, well-defined strategy, American defense officials have juggled multiple hypersonic weapons programs across different military branches. The result has been wasted resources and prolonged delays. At the heart of the issue is a lack of coordination. The U.S. Army and Navy, for instance, have been working on separate hypersonic programs, sometimes with overlapping goals but little collaboration. Meanwhile, the Air Force has faced its own share of failures, most notably with the air-launched Rapid Response Weapon. This program was intended to deliver the Pentagon's first operational hypersonic missile, but repeated test failures led to its cancellation, marking yet another setback for American ambitions in this domain. Russia, on the other hand, has moved swiftly. Instead of dividing its efforts among various competing projects, Moscow has streamlined its hypersonic weapons development under a unified strategy. This approach has allowed it to successfully deploy weapons like the Kinzhal and Avangard, both of which are already operational. By maintaining a clear focus, and avoiding bureaucratic red tape, Russia has managed to stay ahead while the U.S. continues to play catch-up. Another challenge for the U.S. has been its hesitation in choosing a primary hypersonic weapon type. While Russia and China have concentrated on two main categories, boost glide vehicles and hypersonic cruise missiles, the U.S. has dabbled in both without committing fully to either. This indecisiveness has stretched resources thin and contributed to the overall delays in fielding a functional system. Without a clear direction, progress remains slow, and the gap between the U.S. and its adversaries continues to widen. The consequences of these failures are already visible on the battlefield. 
Russia has used hypersonic missiles in combat, notably in Ukraine, where Kinzhal strikes have been reported. Meanwhile, China has demonstrated operational hypersonic capabilities, raising concerns in Washington about a shifting military balance. For the U.S., this isn't just about catching up. It's about maintaining deterrence. A lack of effective hypersonic weapons means America risks falling behind in strategic warfare, leaving its adversaries with a significant advantage. While the U.S. struggles to bring its first hypersonic weapons into service, Russia has already deployed two advanced systems, the KH-47M-2 Kinzhal and the Avangard hypersonic glide vehicle. These weapons give Moscow a strategic edge, especially in terms of striking power and survivability. The Kinzhal, which translates to dagger, is an air-launched hypersonic missile capable of speeds up to Mach 10. It can be fired from MiG-31K fighter jets, allowing for extended range and rapid deployment. One of its biggest advantages is its ability to maneuver mid-flight, making it extremely difficult for existing missile defense systems to intercept. Russia has already used the Kinzhal in Ukraine, demonstrating its combat effectiveness. The Avangard takes hypersonic warfare a step further. Unlike traditional ballistic missiles, which follow a predictable arc, Avangard is a boost glide vehicle, meaning it can change its trajectory mid-flight. This allows it to evade missile defense systems while maintaining speeds of Mach 20. According to Russian officials, Avangard can deliver both conventional and nuclear warheads, making it one of the most formidable weapons in modern warfare. What makes these systems so effective isn't just their speed, it's their unpredictability. Traditional missile defense networks are designed to track and intercept predictable flight paths. But with hypersonic glide vehicles like Avangard, interception becomes nearly impossible. This gives Russia a significant advantage in strategic deterrence, forcing adversaries to rethink their defensive capabilities. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.